I am late to this party, but I've joined now. I am joining. Hello, beautiful people. Today I have a different type of video. I feel like I haven't talked about movies for a while, and this is a great opportunity to talk about some fantastic movies. I was fortunate enough to get tagged in this tag video that's been going around the movie YouTuber community by the one, the only, the fantastic, superb, tremendous, amazing Sean <laughs> at Lost in the Real. If you want a movie person that like not only goes through the latest releases but releases that haven't even been released yet but also really obscure movies that actually could be of interest to you. Sean is the one to go to. So yes, go subscribe. <laughs> go subscribe. I will leave a link and all the links for the YouTubers that I'll mention in this video in my bio. So the tag consists of your top 10 favorite movies of 10 particular genres. Some of them might be ones that you've probably already heard of, but I'm also gonna do a thing where I talk about underrated movies that are of the same genre. That's my favorite as well. I won't go too deep into them, but just to, I don't know, just to kind of catch your eye on a movie that maybe you've never heard of. The first category is horror, baby, horror. Don't even get me started on horror. For my favorite horror movie, it's actually one that I just watched about two years ago. It's an old horror movie, but I just watched it for the first time about two years ago, and I have been scarred for life. But for some reason, I like getting scarred for life because I own it. I actually own it. I wish I could show you. It's at... It's at my boyfriend's house, but I wish I could show I do own it on Blu-ray. And that movie is John Carpenter's The Thing. You know, I'm not really the type to like body horror. I actually try to avoid it at all costs. Like, human centipede, get that away from me. I can't stand it. It has some of the most wild, wild imagery that I've ever seen in my life. Special practical effects, which were created by Botten. That's what's showing up on Wikipedia right now. I will insert the full name of this dude, <laughs> but it says Botten. This man who worked so hard on the special effects of this movie that he was hospitalized. <laughs> He went to the hospital from how much work, how much time and effort he put into creating the effects of this movie. Sir. Sir. I mean, when would you ever see a man's head turn into a spider? <laughs> Never. It's crazy. It's a crazy movie. I love it. I loved it so much that, yeah, I bought it. I bought it as a Blu-ray. I bought it. Who buys a horror movie? Who? No one but me. Now, the horror movie I'd like to bring to your attention for underrated is 1997's Cube. This is a Canadian movie, so I am Canadian. I am Canada. If you've ever seen the movie Escape Room, it's essentially that, but better. <laughs> and what I love so much about this one in particular is there's a big mystery surrounding the cube. Like, you don't know why these people are here. You don't know like how they're gonna get out of this thing. Like there's really, the stakes are so high because you really don't know anything until the end of the movie. Definitely recommend checking it out whenever you have the time. The next category is animation. Oh my gosh. I feel like the most basic, basic person saying that this is my favorite animation movie, but like, how can I not, how can I not? Masapena, the Lion King. It's everything, it's everything I could ask for in an animation. The animation is beautiful. The songs are slaps. It's epic too. You know, you get that dramatic, dramatic scene. I still cry. I still cry. Every time I see Mufasa die, I cry. Now for my underrated one, this is probably not so underrated, but I still consider it underrated because I don't think Disney highlights it that much. And that is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's dark and it's good. I feel so hard for Quasimodo. I Another one, another one, I actually tear up for. They have a scene early on in the film where he's just, he just wants to blend in with everybody. He just wants to have a good time at this festival party thing. And it's so sad. It's so sad what happens at the festival. I just, 
<sighs> they have one of the most dramatic songs too that I've ever heard from Disney in my life. Hellfire did not have to go that hard. <laughs> and the story is beautiful. It's a story of friendship, love, acceptance. I recommend watching it if you haven't watched it already. Next category is drama. And drama, <laughs> drama. This is my favorite movie of all time. This is what made me love film. This is the film I watched that made me love and appreciate film and made me the person I am today. <laughs> Thank you, Dad, for exposing me to this movie. I I will forever love you. I, I love you already, you know that <laughs> unconditionally, but just thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And that is Pulp Fiction. I had never seen a movie told in the narrative that this movie is told. And when everything happens by the end of this, I was like, not only that, but I loved how different, it was so different from everything I've ever seen before up until that point. And that's a big part of that is because of how Tarantino helms his shots, the cinematography, his conversations, his screenplay, the way things pan out. And Tarantino creates interesting characters that you want to watch and get to know from start to finish. And once it's over, you just want to rewatch it for the characters. Just for the characters alone, you want to rewatch it. And it's so entertaining. It's just so entertaining. For for underrated drama, that movie is a cure for wellness. This one illustrates everyone's fears of being stuck in a corrupt psych ward so beautifully. There's a lot of freaky moments in this film. The way this film is crafted, it, it kind of got under my skin. And by the end of it, the ending, ho, oh, oh, ho. I thought about it for a while. I thought about this movie for a while. Definitely recommend watching that one. Next category is comedy. Now this one, it's hard to get me to laugh during a movie. I'm not gonna lie, it's hard to get me to laugh. This movie, it had it, it had it for me. I remember watching this in the theater and I was dying. Like there was, there was parts where I, I laughter, belly laughter, and then the next scene, belly laughter. And that movie is 22 Jump Street. Surprisingly, I love this one more than the first one. I love the first one, don't get me wrong, I love the first one, but it really surprised me with how funny this one was. Obviously, the tag team of Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum is just marvelous, marvelous, fantastic. Yeah, just so many moments. So many moments in this one where I was just dying in my seat. For underrated comedy, this one's hard. Only one I could really think of, if I really think of it, is Spy. That's another one I laugh a lot at. I actually do genuinely laugh at that one. Jason Statham in this movie is gold. When the trailers kept playing, I thought it looked really bad. I didn't think it looked funny at all, and I'm guessing probably a lot of other people felt the same way, so they probably just skipped out on this one entirely, but it's actually really funny. I would recommend it if you liked Bridesmaids. It's not, it's obviously not the same as Bridesmaids, you know, no one's getting married here. <laughs> it's not about Bridesmaids, but, but the sense of humor, I would say, is similar. The next one is sci-fi. Now, sci-fi is interesting because it's another genre that's just not my favorite. <laughs> my favorite sci-fi, and I looked at it, I googled it, this is considered a sci-fi movie, to my surprise, is Inception. I don't even know if I need to talk about this too much because I feel like most people know this movie, but I love it so much personally just because the story, how unique, how unique is it? Obviously the production design is insane. The production that went into this is amazing. I just love this movie. I just love this movie. As for underrated sci-fi, I'm gonna have to give it to easily, easily, Annihilation. This one definitely falls in the category of sci-fi horror. I love how this one is on Earth and that there's something from space that's on Earth that we don't know about and we're not too sure what to do about it and what the consequences of this thing is. And the horror elements that they do with said thing <laughs> There's one scene in particular, if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's one scene that's literally, like, that's from a nightmare. Somebody dreamt up a nightmare and was like, I'm putting that. So yeah, I recommend it. <laughs> Next up is action. Easily. This is another super easy one for me. Terminator 2, baby. James Cameron just, just did it. He just did did it with this movie. The practical effects used in this movie are outstanding and are just an accomplishment alone. The way James Cameron 
films and action sequence is so enthralling. Not only the action sequences are fantastic in this film, but uh, Arnold. Arnold! He has like all of like, maybe like 50 lines in this movie, but he killed it. I love the story too, honestly. I was invested in finding out how it was gonna end because I mean, John Connor, are you gonna save the Earth or not? And you seriously get that feel of on the run. You really, really get the feel that this kid is running for his life. The bad robot is there, is there. It's just always, always right on his toes, right on his heels. Comic, comic book has to be, obviously I love so many. I mean, there's so many, there's MCU ones, there's, older ones like just, there's just so many but i'm gonna have to give it to <laughs> the dark knight i don't even know if i need to explain it do i need to explain it it's just so good like everything about it is so good the joker obviously iconic masterful insane some of the best acting i think anybody has ever seen <laughs> in their life i literally did a school essay <laughs> I swear, I kid you not. I did a school essay on the Joker after this movie. I watched The Dark Knight seven times just to write about the Joker, but also because I just wanted to watch the Joker. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It's just incredible. The story, oh, the way the plot moves, each time the Joker pops up, like you just don't know what to expect. Back, and it's still rewatchable, even though you know what to expect. Like, you can't wait for certain scenes to happen just because of how amazing they are. So, for my underrated comic book movie, I'm gonna have to give it to Watchmen. So underrated, so ridiculously underrated. Like, like, oh, literally, oh god, it's oh god. Boom! I don't know, just the look and feel of Watchmen is, ooh, it's so gritty. It was one of those movies that I just didn't realize like a comic book movie could be so, so gritty. The subject matter too, obviously the source material, you know, comes from the source material, but I love the idea of superheroes having flaws and actual real flaws. Cause usually MCU, you know, those fluffy comic book, they don't touch on, you know, any superhero like major, but they actually show like these heroes, like major psychological issues that they have from being superheroes. In real life, this feels like what would really happen to a person if they become a superhero and then, and then afterwards, like if they're not really being a superhero anymore, like how they would feel. And I love the villain in this and the way the plot line goes and the reasoning behind the villain's intentions. Like everything is just, ooh. Definitely love the movie. The movie, I think, represented the book really well, or the comic book anyway, really well. Western, I don't like Western. Straight up, I don't like it. <laughs> but this one, this is one of the rare ones that I love it, it's considered a Western. You probably know what I'm gonna say, Django Unchained. It's so different than your typical Western, obviously, because of how gruesome it is and how brutal it is. Casting is amazing. You have Christoph Waltz. Oh, love Christoph Waltz. Jamie Foxx as Django, superb. And Leonardo DiCaprio as the villain. Oh, love seeing him as a villain. So entertaining, action-packed. Love all the blood spatter. <laughs> Literally, as soon as someone gets shot, it's like, two thumbs up. I can't say an underrated one for this one, I have to say, because of the fact that I don't like westerns. This is this is literally like the only western that I know, besides Back to the Future Part 3, I guess. But yeah, so I can't recommend um, an underrated one for this one. Romance, it's gonna be basic, but I will say what my underrated one is, but I have to give it to Titanic. I have to give it to Titanic. The first time I watched this movie, I bald. I bald my eyes until they were dry. And I'm not just talking about like, like, like sobbing. I was ugly crying. Like there was snot <laughs> coming out of my nose. The love story between Jack and Rose is beautiful. It's beautiful. Leo and Kate have incredible chemistry. I will say too, I don't only just love it for the romance bit, but also the production. James Cameron, again, when it comes to special effects and practical effects, practical effects, he is there. The last act of the movie with Titanic sinking, 
Oh my god, heartbreaking, but also incredible to see. For my underrated romance, underrated romance, I'll say it's underrated. I do know, like, movie lovers, we do love this, but I still think it's underrated because, like, friends, just anybody that I know and talk to don't know of this movie or this trilogy, and that has to go to Before Sunrise. They take such an outrageous concept <laughs> of falling in love with someone within a day and make it real. <laughs> what? Why am I talking about this? I have a movie. <laughs> I have a movie review on my channel, but overall, overall it's beautiful. It's so romantic. This movie is romantic in the most nicest sense you could get. Like, it's not cheesy in any way. It's beautifully romantic. The last category is adventure, and that has to go to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Dos. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Huge Harry Potter fan. I have all the books right up there. I have number six. <laughs> right up there, Blu-ray, because I love number six too. Mostly because I used to have a crush on Draco, but <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. But yeah, I think this is just personal because yeah, like it's an epic conclusion to an epic series. It tugs at your heartstrings. There's so many moments in there that just, ugh, well, it, it gets you. It gets you in the feels. And there were plenty of scenes of action in this too. There's so many scenes of action in this. Like you have a blend between the heartfelt moments and the action filled moments, which I loved. It felt like the movie that we deserved for a finale. For all the fans, it felt like this was, this did it justice. So the majority of people I want to tag, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've done this video already, but then you can watch it. Then you can go watch their video as well, which is great. It's already there for you. I'm going to tag Screen Kings, Man of Movies, Boxtail Cinematic, For the Love of 80s Movies, Let's Be Real with Brad, Jared Talk Cinema, The Upside Dan, and Nocturnal Critic. Go check them out. Do yourself a favor, go check them out. They're all brilliant. Also, also, if you like this type of video, go over to Lost in the Real. He has something really special planned coming up really soon. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Until next time, my beautiful freaks. Mwah.